the witnesses. Um, with that, the witnesses are excused, and this hearing is now adjourned. This is an unusual virus. For many young people especially, it is a mild illness, but we're seeing some devastating things, and we, and we got a heads up about this from, from the Chinese. They actually informed us, and, and we knew it was coming. Uh, nursing homes. Uh, look what this virus did uh, in that nursing home in Kirkland, Washington. It rolled through it like a train, right? It's set at least seven deaths so far in a nursing home of about 100 people. So this is like the angel of death for, for older individuals. Likely, it's clear from the tragic deaths in Washington how this virus can spread quickly. We saw in Wuhan 1,000 healthcare providers got sick, and we had uh, uh, um, at least 15% severely ill and in, and in ICUs. And that is very dangerous because not only do you subtract those people out of the healthcare workforce, but the demoralizing effect of colleagues taking care of colleagues uh, is gonna be, dev I mean, the whole thing can fall apart if that starts to happen. Amici is recognized for uh, five Thank months. you, Dr. Barra and Ranking Member Lou. I think we've got to prioritize who gets tested. And my recommendation would be that we focus the testing strategically around protecting our three most vulnerable populations that I mentioned, our older residents and, and nursing homes and uh, of places of assisted living. They're highly vulnerable. The mortality right. among them is 10 to 15 percent. Uh, healthcare providers, those who interact with the healthcare providers, and protecting our first responders, because if they go down, then, then again, everything uh, collapses. Uh, um, this emergent coronavirus virus epidemic is a top concern for Oregonians. We continually need support for initiatives to make an impact both domestically and globally through infectious disease monitoring and surveillance. By investing in our neighbors and promoting health initiatives outside of our borders, we help reduce the threat of an outbreak reaching the United States. There's another essential step to being prepared, long-term support of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and for local departments of public health. Also demonstrates some reasons for optimism. It demonstrates what we can accomplish when the scientific... Unfortunately, some of my colleagues in the biotech uh, industry are making these inflated claims. You know, you've, you've seen this on, on the newspapers. We're going to have this vaccine in weeks or in this and that. What they're really saying is they can move a vaccine into clinical trials, but this will not go quickly because as we start vaccinating human volunteers, especially in areas where we have community transmission, uh, we're going to have to proceed very slowly, very cautiously. The Best case time. scenario, Dr. Hood. And Dr. Fauci said at least 12 months. He's definitely right, at least 12 months, but whether that means uh, another year after that, maybe, maybe two years, it really depends on the safety signals that we're seeing with these vaccines. Observing this, what are some of the common um, misinformation? So we've got to figure out what the ecosystem is going to be to develop vaccines that are not going to make money. Uh, the big pharma companies are still not going in. Some of the biotechs are starting to because they're trying to really accelerate their technology and use it and hopefully to flip it around for something else that will make money. We need a new system in place. Investment in the, fundamental needs of disease detection and the bottom line is, had we had those investments early on, uh, to carry this all the way through clinical trials years ago, we could have had a vaccine ready to go. Mr. Gonzalez, direct nice five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And the administration should be transparent. They should be uh, clear about what they know. They should tell the truth, um, be clear about what they don't know, what they're doing to try to find out um, those missing pieces of information, um, and be clear about what, uh, what the course is and what information might change that course. Illinois, Mr. Kasten. Thank you, uh, and, and uh, thank you all for coming.